Today, we're gonna to go over the perfect landing page structure from top to bottom, every element above the fold and every element below the fold. We're going over everything, so let's jump right into it. So hey guys, I'm Izzy from Flux, and the other day I came across a really, well, more like the other month, came across a really, really cool article um, from a marketing newsletter that I'm subscribed to called Marketing Examples. And the article is uh, titled, my step-by-step -step guide to landing pages that convert. And so you may be thinking, you know, first you may be thinking marketing and design, two totally different things. I actually think there's a lot of crossover. I think they're both trying to accomplish the same thing, which is make a product as attractive as possible to the user. But on top of that, as I was reading this article in particular, I thought every web designer on earth needs to read and be aware of this article. Um, and as you can see, it's quite, uh, comprehensive and so actually you're not even going to read this article because I've extracted all the important pieces of information and going to deliver them to you in this video so let's jump right into it so we're not going to spend too much time on each one because there's there's literally 10, 10 different elements that we're going to go over and the first one um, one of the most important especially when it comes to first impressions is your title slash headline and, and this is where you, you're basically going to explain the value that you provide. Uh, and so a good example here is to just uh, basically explain what you do. And mu the Muzzle app um, does just that. So Muzzle, a simple Mac app to silence embarrassing notifications while screen sharing. Uh, and if you want a good laugh, then definitely visit this website and look at the hilarious fake notifications that appear on the side here. Um, but so this is a great example of a solid headline. I'd make it, of course, more prominent if we're talking um, visually, but the actual message is good. So after you've got the headline, you, you need the subtitle or subhead. Uh, and this is where you're going to elaborate on how you're going to deliver that value. Um, and a good example of that would be Dormio. So their headline reads, restful nights or a sip away. Um, and so how do you, how do we accomplish these restful nights? Well, a calming and sleep inducing tea uh, to help you unwind and drift to sleep. So restful nights are the value and how you accomplish that is via the tea and its effects are it's calming and induces sleep. So subtitle elaborate on how you deliver that initial, that value that you, that you communicate in the headline. After the, uh, the subhead or the subtitle, you have the call to action. And the whole point, you know, the main purpose of the, the call to action is to basically guide the user to tell them, okay, this is, this is what comes next. This is what you should be, this is the easiest next step. In my opinion, there's two really good um, routes that you can take in terms of, in terms of call to action, calls to action. I'll show you two examples here. First example is a um, what they call in marketing a call to value. Um, an ex and an example of a call to value is on the actual Flux website. It was the first one that came to mind. Um, is So our CTA reads, start learning. Um, so there's value there. Uh, instead of, um, you know, a regular call to action like sign up or, you know, learn more or something like. Um, and then the other one is uh, so if call to value and they have objection handling, um, and these are these are usually a little longer. And Zencaster has a great example here, or is a great example of this kind of uh, button. Um, and this is where you literally handle objections within the button copy. So dr try Zencaster for free. There's literally no risk. Um, and the for free part is the. Um, the objection handling. So next, uh, I think we're on number four. Could be number three, number four. But anyways, we have social proof. Um, and a lot of people forget to include this above the fold. I think it can be very impactful to include above the fold because you're building immediate credibility. You're immediately leveraging what's called the, um, the cognitive bias called the bandwagon effect. A great example of this is on the Privy website, privy.com. Um, and if you look right under the, the subtitle, Shopify, five stars, 18,000 plus reviews. So immediate 
credibility, right? Um, and, and so when we talk social proof, it doesn't have to be a long testimonial or or a bunch of icons or something like that. It could it could be something super brief and um, like a, a rating and the amount of the amount of reviews. Um, so social this is social proof above the fold. We're, we'll jump to social proof. Um, a different kind of social proof below the fold um, in a bit. The fifth element is the visual. This is another one that people don't put much thought into, I find. Um, and it maybe, actually, I should reword that. They do put much a lot of thought into it, so they'll have like the super beautiful, fancy illustrations or, or uh, 3D objects and something super fancy, whereas um, users actually prefer to just see your product in action. They just want to see your product working. Um, and so a, a great example of this is on the smiledirectclub.ca website. Um, I guess this is some sort of uh, te teeth straightening product. And so you can see people using it. You can see the product in action and the, the results. And you can see just the actual physical product. So very important, I would highly recommend if you have a, a mobile app or um, you know any kind of SaaS, uh, show the actual product being used. Users want to see that. They prefer that to beautiful illustrations or you know, like I said, 3D objects, patterns, etc. You can include those, but uh, at the forefront should be your product uh, in action. So we've uh, gone over everything above the fold. Um, now let's jump into the elements that appear below the fold. And by the way, I didn't define the fold, but that's, you know, anything above the fold is what you immediately see when the page loads. Um, it's everything that you see without having to scroll. And so now we're going to go over everything below the fold. And the first thing is the features and objections. Uh, and this is where you basically justify all that value Everything that you've said in the headline and the, the subtitle, you're basically justifying. You're explaining how things work, you're handling objections, um, and you're showing more of how the product, you're showing more of the product in action. And a great example of this is the Zencaster website, which we've already gone over, but I really enjoy their website. They just updated it. And so if, you, if we move below the fold, um, so you see the product in action, but then under there, under that, you see, okay, so their claim in the headline is high fidelity podcasting. Record your podcast in studio quality. And so basically what they're doing here is the features and the benefits, everything that facilitates that value. So studio quality sound, Zencaster records in lossless 16-bit. No idea what any of that stuff means, but I'm assuming, um, I'm assuming it's all very impressive. And, you know, HD video recording, um, built-in VOIP chat and footnotes. No idea what that is either. But, again, soundboard for live editing. It's um, it's building on that headline and that subtitle and elaborating and providing more details on the actual product itself. So after your features and objections and benefits and stuff, um, this is where you come in with a little bit more social proof. Um, and here you can actually, this is where your testimonials come in, your success stories, um, that kind of thing. And somebody who I think, or a website I think does this very well, is Byte Toothpaste. Beautiful website, by the way. Go check it out, bitestoothpastebits.com. And so, you know, you've got all your uh, bells and whistles below, above the fold. And if you go below the fold... You've got two sections with social proof. First, you've got this one from Credible Media, right? Quit your tube of toothpaste, try these waste-free tablets. Anyways, so let's let's scroll down to the actual customer testimonials. So this is where you're basically allowing your your customers to sell on your behalf. So here's a, here's a great example of a testimonial. Love these. I'm always looking for the full package, eco-friendly, sustainable, vegan, cruelty-free, all the good things wrapped into one. Thank you, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You, they're basically is, you know, this is where you, like I said, allow your customers to do the pitching for you and um, and sell the product on your behalf. So 
um, your testimonials, all that kind of stuff, save it for below the fold. And uh, yeah, that's that for social proof. So after your below the fold social proof, you have um, your FAQ, your frequently asked questions. Your, your FAQ is where you're gonna include, you're gonna include uh, any objection handling that you weren't able to include in the features and benefits and objections um, part. So whatever was able, whatever you weren't able to fit there, you will in, you will include in a in a dedicated frequently asked questions section. And so a great um, a good example of this is the uh, wearenudes.com website. This is a Webflow site, by the way. Beautiful interactions. Um, but if you scroll down here, you've got the fact, and you know keep it simple. Use your accordions. Every single objection that you weren't able to address earlier, right under the fold, you will dedicate or you will add to a frequently asked question section. The next one is uh, the second call to action. Uh, most websites get this one right. So you have your call to action above the fold in the hero section. And usually uh, you'll have, after delivering on your uh, social proof, features and benefits, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You make it convenient for the user to uh, take action and, and take the, you know, take the next step and include another call to action, um, you know, close to the footer. And finally, I think this one is actually really impactful and uh, uncommon. I don't see this one um, used as much is uh, the founder's note. And this is where the people behind the website, people behind the product can tell their story, explain how the product came about, what kind of uh, problems they're trying to solve with this product. And um, so a great example of this is on the Neuro, I think it's Neuro, website is getneuro.com. Um, I think it's basically just healthy gum functional gum and mints to energize and calm, calm and focus you in the moment. So if you scroll down, they've got a little bit of a founder's note at the bottom, our mission. Yeah, this is, this would be it. Our mission. So they don't have it right here on the page, which um, in my opinion is preferable, but let's pretend they do have it on the page and we'll click through our story. And it's really cool. I've got this cool video of the founders. I believe these are the founders. And here they kind of explain that they were both athletes and um, but they were also in school and they needed a um, something to relax them, but that was also, um, I guess, eco-friendly and healthy. And so that's how this healthy sort of performance gum came about. Uh, so a founder's note at the bottom where you tell a story, I think, can be very impactful and very powerful. So um, do include a founder's note. And that's it. I think that's number 10. Yeah, so 10 elements in total. Uh, how about we do a little bit of a recap? So throw it up on the screen right now. We have the title where you basically state the value that you're going to uh, that you're that you're providing subtitle where you sort of elaborate on that value. How is it delivered? Uh, call to action. Make it easy to take the next step. Um, social proof. Build credibility. Leverage that bandwagon effect. And then your visual where you preferably show people how your product works. You show how you show your product in action. So those are the elements above the fold. Now if you go below the fold, that's where you inc first include your features and objections. Um, and benefits, of course. So how this basically justifies everything that you've said in uh, the headline and the subhead. So you're going over features, you're handling objections, and um, overall just elaborating on how you deliver that value with your product. And then you include more social proof. And so here is where you include things like testimonials and success stories. So more social proof, and then you have your frequently asked questions. Um, and what you will include is in the frequently asked questions is anything you weren't able to neatly fit in your features slash benefits slash objections section. Um, so 
So any objections that you weren't able to, or potential questions that you weren't able to fit there, you will add to this frequently asked questions section. Then you have your second CTA, um, you know, just to make it convenient to click through. And finally, your founder's note where you tell your story, you explain how your product came about, um, the problems that you're solving, and just humanize the whole thing, show that there's an actual, actual people behind this product. And so that's it. That's the, that's the perfect landing page structure. So I hope this was super helpful. I know that um, you know I've I've referred to this article. I mean I, I mean I read it about a month or two ago, and I've referred to it a dozen times since. So it'll be linked, of course, in the description. Shout out to marketingexamples.com. Shout out to Harry, who's behind or Harry Fry, I think his last name is. Anyways, marketing Harry from marketingexamples.com. Shout out to him um, for the incredible value. The article will be linked. Uh, make sure to like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.